Do you remember when I set a very ambitious November TBR? Yeah, that didn't happen. Hello and welcome to another video. My name is Lizzie and today we're going to be looking at my November wrap up, which is a pared down version of my November TBR. <laughs> I did manage to read six books this month, which this time last year I would have been thrilled with. I've just been reading a lot more recently and I was hoping to keep it up this month, but between life getting a bit busier and reading a couple of longer and slower paced books, which is good, that's what I want to do, uh, I didn't quite manage to fulfil my TBR. But I still read some good books this month. I also read some not so good books this month. It was a very, overall it was a kind of meh, okay, month for, for reading. There were some great, but on the whole, it wasn't, it was fine. You know, it was fine. So without any further ado, here are the books I read in November. First of all, and this was my favourite book this month, The Hidden Case of Ewan Forbes by Zoe Playden. This is a non-fiction book, which is part biography and part the history of trans rights in the UK for the last century. And it was amazing and I've recommended it to so many people since I read it. <laughs> it's one of those books, since I finished it, I haven't been able to stop thinking about all the things I've learned and how it, I see it, well, I see what I've read about in the world around me every day. So the kind of main narrative of this story, so it is a non-fiction book, um, but it is telling like a kind of biography in many ways of um, a real figure, and that is Ewan Forbes, as you would guess from the title, who was a baronet in Scotland. Now, in the UK, then there are certain titles of which baronets and lords, etc., are are one of them that fall under what is called male primogenitor and I'm almost certainly saying primogenitor wrong but that's just how I'm gonna say it just FYI <laughs> what that means is that these titles can only be passed through the male line uh, they cannot be held by any woman um, and you cannot turn one down if you if you just have it because it's the whole divine right of kings thing that we apparently we still have and also these positions do hold like actual positions of political power, um, which is this whole other like nightmare that we can discuss another day. But Ewan Forbes was the youngest child of a Scottish baronet. His older brother inherited first and when his brother died with no sons, then he inherited it. But Ewan wasn't assigned male at birth, he was assigned female at birth and as a teenager he medically transitioned, as an adult he legally transitioned, so by the time his brother died he was, in the eyes of the law, considered male and was able to inherit the title. This is all like in the 1950s, 1960s, I should have clarified that. This is a long time ago, but not that long ago. In comes his cousin who claims that Ewan should not be entitled to the baronetcy because he was not assigned male at birth and therefore should not be entitled to have the position. So the cousin takes Ewan to court over his inheritance and Ewan wins the case. So this is 1960s, Ewan wins the case, the court finds that he is male and that he should be able to inherit this. Of course it's much more complicated than that, there's lots more going on, but that is, you know, the bare structure, the bare bones of what's going on. This is set against the backdrop of how attitudes towards trans people and trans rights and our ideas of gender are shifting over the last century. The final sort of twist though was that Ewan's case was kept under lock and key and was instructed to never be used as precedent in another legal case and Zoe Playden argues that that set trans rights back decades and decades and undid lots of work that had been done in the UK prior to that and that most of where we are at the moment in trans politics comes from that moment where Ewan's case and another much more public case were both being argued in the courts. The whole story was just fascinating and so well written you couldn't help but just sit and read for hours and hours on end and if you live in the UK I would highly recommend reading this book just to understand how we got to where we are today, 
why we got to where we are today and why the UK has such a different attitude towards trans people as the rest of Europe or at least the rest of Western Europe and the USA which are both different but both different from the UK again and it's very specific to the UK and it's very interesting but heartbreakingly tragic to see why things are the way they are. The next book I read was another review copy, this one sent to me by the author, and it was Winterset Hollow by Jonathan Edward Durham. The cover isn't coming up very well on camera, so I'm just gonna like, can you see that a bit better? Oh, there it is now, okay. This is a sort of horror, fantasy, wind in the willows gone very, very wrong sort of book. <laughs> the main character, he and his two best friends, they have a shared love for um, their favourite childhood book and they decide to go and visit the island where the author lived which was also the inspiration for his book. When they get there though they find out that the book wasn't quite as fictional as they had believed and that the real creatures who were the inspiration for the book have something else in mind for the human visitors who come to the island. This is such a good premise for the book. I would say for this book I loved the start, I loved the end and the middle just didn't quite grab me as much unfortunately. It was a really good premise um, and I thought the conclusion was really interesting and a really good way of wrapping up all the characters and quite emotional towards the end as well. The middle for me was a lot of scary horror running away from scary things and fighting them um which if that's up your alley then you will love this book it was just a lot of kind of the same for me in the middle um but yes thank you to the author for sending me this one then another net galley book net galley really was the mvp of my reading this month or rather most of my reading was panic reading my net galley shelf to try and bring it down but the next one i read was ladies of the secret circus by constance sayers so i looked at the title and the cover and the blurb which sort of described these two timelines and this cross-generational story about a magical circus and revenge and love and romance and all of this and i was like i know what to expect um but the first line i wrote in my reading journal was honestly very little circus content which was my main takeaway of this one. It was just not very much. I was here for the magical and mystical circus. It did not appear until 40% of the way through the book. So technically we did have a dual timeline thing going on, but the vast majority of the story was the 21st century timeline. And occasionally we would go back to the like 1920s timeline and the 20th century people just weren't that interesting, you know? And there were a lot of kind of extra details that we didn't need. Um, and yeah, I just wasn't, I wasn't a huge fan. And some of the writing was a bit rubbish, to be honest. There was one line where it was like, um, she let out a breath she had been holding. <laughs> I was like, they clearly went to write. She let out a breath she didn't know she was holding. Realised it was a cliche and just pressed backspace and was like, oh, that'll do. You know, things like that. It just wasn't, the writing wasn't great, you know? Um, so yeah, lots of extra details that were unnecessary. Very little circus content, three stars. Still on the review copies. It's, it's, it's a review copy month. And the next one is actually an anthology called Beyond the Cogs. It's a steampunk anthology of three short stories. Steampunk is something that in principle, I really like. I love the aesthetics, I love the themes and the kind of tropes that you get in steampunk, um, but in reality most steampunk books I've read I haven't really enjoyed. Um, some I've loved, uh, I guess technically his dark materials you could count as steampunk and you know that's one of my favourite books ever. Definitely Northern Lights you could count as steampunk, maybe not the rest. So I deliberately went looking for more steampunk books on Book Sirens, which is a kind of similar-ish website to NetGalley. It's another ARC website. And I came across this and I was so excited to read it. And it was really good. I really enjoyed it. The first story in the collection was The Soulless Ones by C. Vonzale Lewis. And I 
loved this. It was so good. It felt like it felt like a whole novel had just been squashed down into a short story. It was amazing. And I got to the end and I just wanted more, but also it was like a really nice self-contained story um about automatons and um kind of like spirits and is set in new orleans and just generally a great time was had by all that was my favorite one of the book the second one was the rogue of vanguard by nicholas j evans this one was fine it was my least favorite of the three um it felt a bit more like a prologue to a larger story i sort of felt i didn't really feel like I got into the story enough before it was over, you know? Um, but it was still it was still enjoyable as a as a short story. And then the last one is Gossamer and Thorns by L. Beaumont, who is also the editor of this collection. And I really enjoyed this one. It was much more of a romance with like a steampunk background. So whereas the other two were definitely steampunk stories in like that the plot relied on steampunk uh tropes and characteristics and things then this uh on the whole didn't there was a little bit of a steampunk kind of ending in the plot but on the whole it was kind of a romance with a steampunk backdrop and i i really enjoyed that so all together three very different stories that i think were a great introduction to steampunk a great introduction to some indie authors um so yeah i really enjoyed this collection and i gave it four stars the next one was the real the real beast of this month because it took so long it was so long and that is the courage game by jenny whitaker it's another review copy and it's historical fiction based on a real person so it's described as a novelized biography um of a real person gladys mary hazel who was a suffragette and she was very involved with the suffragette movement and she went to prison a few times, uh, or I think just once. Either way, she went to prison uh, as a suffragette. Uh, so I had a very interesting life. And it's written by her great niece, so someone in the family, which was an interesting dynamic, I thought. Um, it was. I was glad I knew that going in, because uh, I was a little bit more sympathetic to kind of wanting to emphasise all the amazing things that she did possibly at the expense of having a more well-rounded character. It was a really enjoyable read in terms of the writing style. I really enjoyed the writing style. The pacing was a little bit... Um, the pacing of the writing was okay, but the pacing of the plot didn't quite fit in terms of all the exciting stuff of her life, which, well, you know, she's a real person. I'm sure she would argue, and the author would argue, that um, the things that lead up to the exciting events of our life are just as important uh, as the actual events themselves. But I am reading a fiction book and I want to know about the campaigning and the suffragette stuff and all of that was kind of really close to the end. Um, my real thing I did not like that I actually just disliked about this book is the way that regional accents were written and I mean, okay, it's one thing when, like, Charles Dickens does it, because, you know, it's a long time ago. <laughs> Give him a pass. I'm sure he did a lot in, like, normalising different accents and things. And I'm all for writing out dialects and vernaculars and using... Writing out a little bit of accents where it helps the reader's understanding of how that person talks. I will admit part of this is that... The accents in question were Birmingham accents and I lived not too far from Birmingham for a very long time and I'm very fond of the people in the West Midlands and the community and culture in the West Midlands and even though I myself don't have the accent um, then you know it kind of it just felt a bit excessive and a bit sort of um, patronising is not is too strong of a word but very sort of, oh, we're going to write out how all these people speak differently. Um, there were some words that were just spelt completely differently for no reason. And it's not like English is a phonetic language, you know? <laughs> like, even if you could be... Even the Queen does not read things out exactly as they're written because we have a ridiculous language. So, yeah, that did annoy me a bit. And then also that there were things that should have been changed that weren't. 
So, like, people in the West Midlands will call their mum mom. And that wasn't there. But then other words, it, yeah. It was inconsistent and I didn't like it. It was too much. Um, so, yes, that definitely kind of decreased my enjoyment of this. But overall, it was it was a solid, solid read. The final book I read this month was not a review copy. I actually just read a book that was on my list and that is Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno Garcia. Now I have done a dedicated reading vlog for this um, which will be going up uh, next week so I won't say too much here. I did really enjoy this. It was very spooky and creepy and very atmospheric um, very dark in theme as well as tone. Um, but yes, I know a lot of people didn't like this because also the drawback for them was that it was quite slow paced but I really I personally really liked that I do quite like kind of being able to sort of indulge yourself in a book sometimes um so yeah I will say more about this in my reading vlog but I did really enjoy this one as well those are all of the books that I have read this November. If you have read any of these books, then let me know what you thought and let me know what you read this month as well. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like and all of those things and I will see you next time. Bye!